Okay, Assalamualaikum. So, this is the last topic for the semester under course code ACC 117 or ACC 106. Uh, the last topic that we're going to cover is the financial statement analysis and financial ratios. So, as usual, please have before you your textbooks and uh, pass here so that we can go through uh, the tutorial as we go along with the slides. So this is uh, the table of content uh, for the topic that we're going to cover for this uh, video lecture sessions. We're going to start off with the introduction followed by the objective of financial ratios and then we're going to talk about the financial ratios. And lastly, we're going to do some tutorial so that we can understand uh, the topic better. So financial statements consist of the statements of profit or loss and statement of financial positions. So these are the statement that you have learned to prepare in the previous uh, chapter. Uh, and the reason why we prepare the financial statements is for us to analyze and assess the performance of a business. Financial statements reports the performance of the, uh, the performance for a business and its financial position for a particular year. Okay, financial statements can be used to predict firms' future earnings and dividends as well as its risks. These are analyzed through the use of various tools. And one of the tools commonly used is the financial ratios. So what are the objectives of financial ratio? One is for us to identify the weaknesses as well as the strength of a business. Secondly is to take appropriate steps for actions uh, to overcome any weaknesses. Uh, and lastly, is to enable the business to improve overall financial situation in the future. So we're going to go through the financial ratios that you need to know and to uh, and to interpret for this topic. Okay, the first ratio is current ratio. The first ratio is current ratios. So current ratios falls under the liquidity ratios. So these are the type of ratios and these are and this is the specific ratio under the liquidity ratio. So liquidity ratio is calculated to measure the ability of a business to meet its current obligations when they become due. We want to see whether the company has enough cash to pay off short-term obligation or current liabilities uh, when it comes due. So the first ratio that we use is current ratios. So this is the formula to calculate the current ratio. Current ratio divided by current liability. So let's say that you calculate the current ratio to be at two times. So it means that for every one ringgit of current liabilities, the firm has two ringgit of current assets to back up. Meaning that for every one ringgit that we have to pay to our uh, to our liabilities, the the firm has two ringgit of assets to pay off that one ringgit of liability. So this is a good level of current ratio because we have more current asset to pay off the current liability. Okay, the second ratio under the liquidity ratio is quick ratio. So to calculate the quick ratio is the current asset. We take out the inventory as well as any prepayments under the current assets. And then we divide by current liability. So why do we take out inventory and prepayment? So we cannot use inventory or any accrued revenue or prepaid expense to pay off the current liabilities. What we need is cash. 
So in order for us to be more accurate in measuring the company's liquidity, we need to take out the inventory as well as the prepayments. So let's say that after we take out the inventory and prepayment, our quick ratio is, let's say, less than the previous one. So uh, if you have calculated the quick ratio to be at two times, then for every one ringgit of current liabilities the firm has, uh, two ringgit of current of quick assets to, uh, to pay off the liability without selling its inventory. The second type of ratio that we're going to learn is the efficiency ratio. So these ratios measure the efficiency of a business in managing its assets to generate revenue. So we want to see how efficient we are in generating profit by utilizing our available assets. So the first ratio under the inventory under the efficiency ratio is the inventory turned over. So the formula to calculate inventory turnover is cost of sales or cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. So average inventory is calculated by, uh, by by adding up opening and closing stock and then we divide by 2. So let's say that we've calculated the turnover to be at 7 times. So it means that the company replenishes it stock seven times a year. So the higher the inventory to over, the faster the company is selling off their stock. The second ratio under the efficiency ratio is the average collection period. So this formula measures how long it takes for a company to collect debts from their debtors. So the higher is the ACP, the longer it takes for the company to collect debt the shorter the ACP, the faster the company collect debts from its debtors. So our aim is to have as low as possible uh, for the ACP. So this is the formula for you to calculate the uh, ACP uh, in which we take the account receivable value from the financial, financial position and then we divide by credit sales times with 365 days. Okay. Uh, so let's say that you calculated the ACP to be at 70 days. So it means the company collect debts from its debtors every 70 days. Or you can also say the company takes 70 days to collect debts from its debtors. The third ratio that we need to know is, we is what we call as profitability ratios. Okay. So if previously efficiency ratio is for us to measure how efficient the company is in managing the assets to generate sales or profit, under profitability ratios, we use these ratios to measure the performance of a business during an accounting period. Meaning that we would like to see how much profit the company generates during the year based on the uh, sales that we have. So the first formula here is gross profit margin. Okay, so the formula is gross profit divided by sales, total sales, total sales, time with 100%. So let's say that you have calculated the GPM to be at 40%. So it means that for every one ringgit of sales, the business generate 40 cents of gross profit. One ringgit of sales, 40 cents is gross profit. The second ratio that we need to know is the net profit margins. So net profit margin is the same formula as gross profit margin except we change the gross profit into net profits. So let's say that we've calculated the NPM to be at 20%. So it means that for one ringgit, for every one ringgit of sales, the company generates 20 cents of net profit. Okay, uh, and lastly is the return on investment. So we would like, as the owner of the business, we would like to see for every warring gate that we have invested in our company, what is the return we get from the business that we have invested. So the formula for this is net profit divided by owner's equity 
plus non-current liabilities. So ROI of 11% means for every one of capital employed, the business generates 11 cents of net profits. So now that you have known all of the formula uh, for this topic, what we have is under the, under the liquidity ratio, we have two ratio, current ratio and quick ratio. Under the efficiency ratio, we have two ratios, uh, the inventory turnover as well as average collection period. And under the profitability ratio, we have three ratios, which are the gross profit margin, net profit margin, and return on investments. So let's see how it's usually being asked in your final assessment. All right. So this is the question given to you. It says here, the following information has been extracted from the financial statements of Salmi Jikal Sundiyah Warhat during the year ended 31st December 2018. So they give you a list of financial statements items and then they also give you the additional information where it says that average stock for the year is 28,300. A current receivable is valued at 44,000. Closing inventory is 36,000. Prepayment is 450. And then they ask you to calculate the, the following ratios for the company. Okay. So quick ratio, the formula here is current asset divided by current liability. So current asset here is 104,000. Divided by current liabilities, uh, which is 70,400. So we get 1.48. Time. So the interpretation should be for every warranty of current equity, the company has warranty of 48 cents of current asset as backup. So for quick ratio, the formula is current asset minus the uh, closing inventory minus the prepayment. So the closing inventory here is 36,000 given to you in the additional information and the prepayment here is 450 ringgit. So take out all the inventories and the prepayment, we divide by the current liabilities. Our quick ratio is 0 0.6 times, 96 times. So the uh, the interpretation would be for every one year of current liability, the company has 96 cents of current assets without selling off its inventory. Okay, and then the third formula they ask you to calculate is the inventory turnover ratio. The formula is uh, cost of goods sold or cost of sales divided by uh, average stock. So here we have uh, found out that the cost of goods sold here is 120,300 and the average stock is 28,300. So you simply divide the two figures, you should get 4.25 times. So it means that the business replenishes its inventory 4.25 times per year. For GPM, uh, the formula is gross profit divided by uh, sales times with 100%. So in the question, it doesn't give you any information about the gross profit, but we can calculate. We can calculate. The calculation for the gross profit is sales divided minus the cost of so, so our sales here is 240, our cost of goods sold is 120,300. So the difference between these two figures is gross profit divided by sales. So you should get 49.88%. So it means that for every one year of sales, the company generates 50 cents of gross profit. Okay, the next uh, formula or ratio is the net profit margin. So the net profit margin is calculated to, as is calculated as gross profit minus all the expenses that you have plus income. So plus income minus expenses. So income here is fifty five thousand, expenses here is eighty three thousand. So we minus with the gross profit that we've calculated previously. So we get a net profit divided by uh, sales total sales. So you get net profit margin to be at 38.21%. So it means that for every one year of sales, the business generates 38 cents of net profit. 
For a curvature period, uh, the formula here is a uh, curvature divided by uh, credit sales times with 365 days. So a curvature here is 44,000 given to you in the additional information, and a credit sale is 160,000. So you found out that the account receivable period is 100 days. So the business takes 100 days to collect debts from its debtors. Lastly, is event return on investment. Uh, it's calculated by the net profit divided by owner's equity plus non-current liabilities. So net profit we've calculated uh, previously when we calculate the net profit margin and for the equity here it's 94,000 non current liability is 60,000 so this is our capital employed divide the two figures we should get 59.55% it means that for every one ringgit of the capital employed the business generates 60 cents of net profit so that's the end of this topic uh, Please feel free to ask me any question if you have it and I will discuss with you in the uh, group chat that chat group that we have. So thank you for your time and for your attention and for your patience. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good day to you.